Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a gravity water tank. Now that the world is getting a little crazy, escaping the madness and becoming more self-sufficient is more important than ever. With this setup, you won't need electricity to keep your water flowing. All you need is a pump, a raised tank, and stored water, like rainwater or water from a pond. You can use this system to supply water to your cabin or for irrigation. If you're looking for tips on how to live off-grid, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Before we install the tank, I'll quickly show you how to build a wooden tank stand. Depending on what you're using it for, it's best for the stand to be high enough to generate enough water pressure. The higher the tank, the greater the pressure. In our case, the stand will be 4 meters high, which is perfect for both household supply and irrigation. For this, you'll need pressure-treated timber for durability, 4x4s for the poles and 6x2s for the top plates and reinforcement. We'll also use 4-inch and 2-inch screw nails, a spirit level, and a drill. Each pole will be spaced 5 feet apart and will be 5 meters long, allowing for 1 meter to go into the ground. Start by digging holes that are 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters and 1 meter deep. Set the poles in place and pour in the concrete. Be sure to lift each pole slightly so the concrete surrounds it fully. Use a spirit level to ensure the poles are perfectly upright. Let the concrete cure for two to three days, depending on weather conditions. Once it's set, add cross lap joints on all sides for support. and finish with the top plates. This is where the tank will sit. The next step is to install our water tank. A water tank typically has three key pipe connections or openings, an inlet where water enters the tank from the pump, an outlet where water leaves the tank for use, for example, taps, toilets, or irrigation, and finally, an overflow which is a safety feature to handle excess water. It's important to understand the pipe sizes you want to use to avoid buying components that don't fit. In most cases, you'll work with one inch, three quarters inch, or half an inch pipes. For this job, we'll be using three quarters inch pipe. So here's what we need. Three three-quarters inch tank outlets. One three-quarters inch gate valve. Three-quarters inch connectors. And three-quarters inch pipe. Notice that we're using three-quarters inch consistently across all components. This avoids misfits and ensures everything connects properly. We'll also need a drill with a hole saw, a plumbing wrench, and some Teflon tape. Let's begin with the outlet. Start by drilling a hole in the tank. Leaving a few inches from the base. Insert the tank outlet. Tighten firmly with a plumbing wrench. Before connecting the gate valve, wrap Teflon tape around the threads of the outlet. About three rolls will do just fine. So when you are applying Teflon tape, you always want to apply it clockwise to the direction that is facing you. This prevents the tape from getting messed while screwing and later ruining the seal. Then screw on the gate valve. This is the part that turns your water supply on and off. Next, add the connector. 
This connects the gate valve to the pipe. There are different types depending on the kind of pipe you're using. For example, here's a PX pipe connector. One side is a male NPT, and the other is a PX adapter. If you're using a PX pipe, you'll need a crimp ring. Make sure it's in the right position. Then use a crimp tool to compress the ring. Alternatively, you can use a push to connect fitting, which we will use throughout. It's simple, long lasting, and works with multiple pipe types, including PEX, CPVC, copper, and HDPE. Just make sure to push the pipe all the way in for a secure fit. Next, we'll install the inlet. Drill a hole at the top of the tank. Insert the tank outlet. Then wrap it with Teflon tape. Then add the elbow connector. One side has a male NPT that connects to the outlet, and the other side is the push to connect where we add the pipe. Now for the overflow. Choose the level where you want your tank to stop filling, and drill a hole at that height. Insert a tank outlet, wrap it with Teflon tape, Then screw on the elbow and connect the overflow pipe. This pipe can be directed back to your stored water or straight to the garden in case of overflow. You might be wondering, how much does this all cost? Let's break it down. For the tank stand, a 16-foot pressure treated 4 by 4 post costs around $29 to $40. We'll estimate $40 each, so 4 posts cost $160. The rest of the structure uses 2 by 6 lumber, each piece 12 feet long. We'll need 15 pieces. At around $30 each, that's $450. 4-inch screws will cost about $26 for a box of 250, and 2-inch screws will cost around $15 for a box of 300. Total cost for the tank stand, $651. And for the tank installation. A 1,000-liter tank costs approximately $200. Brass tank outlets are about $10 each, so for three, that's $30. A gate valve costs around $17. A push to connect fitting will cost $9. Elbow connectors are about $13 each. We need two, so that's $26. A roll of Teflon tape costs about $2. The cost of pipes depends on the type you choose and the length of your water line. So the overall total, including the stand, comes down to $935. Way cheaper than an electrified system that requires professional installation. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Maximum respect. Take care.